Hello everyone, this is Jim Lucy, Editor-in-Chief for Electrical Wholesaling and Electrical Marketing with episode number 99 of the Today's Electrical Economy podcast series sponsored by Champion Fiberglass. The company began producing epoxy fiberglass conduit fittings in 1980 and in 1989 developed the first conduit from epoxy resins that had flame resistance and low smoke characteristics. This met the most stringent codes and specifications. Episode 99 of our podcast series looks at the hottest electrical stocks in the second quarter of 2024 and takes it into one of the hot spots in the U.S. Census Department's latest construction and spending data, the industrial market. We'll also be providing updates for on five week key weekly economic indicators, initial unemployment claims at the state level, rail freight car traffic, the Baker Hughes rig count, oil prices, and copper prices. Our thanks again to Champion Fiberglass for sponsoring the Today's Electrical Economy podcast series for 2024. For the week ending June the 29th, the advanced figure for seasonally adjusted initial unemployment claims was 238,000. That is an increase of 4,000 from the previous week's revised level. The four-week moving average was 238,500, and that's an increase of 2,250 from the previous week's revised average. The U.S. unemployment rate ticked up a per- portion of a percent to 4.1 percent in June. We only had two states with notable decreases in their unemployment claims for the week ending July the 8th. Connecticut was down 1,739 claims. They're now sitting at 4,287. Maryland was down 1,001 claims, now at 2,470. The other six states that had claims over 500, claimed declines over 500 was Wisconsin, down 882 claims at 3,905. Minnesota down 712 claims to 5,963. Florida down 558 to 6,749. Vermont down 540 claims to 409. Pennsylvania down 524 claims to 12,018. And New Hampshire down 507 claims now at 430 claims. We did see a fairly good sized handful of states with claims over the 1,000 mark. And that is, as I mentioned in previous podcasts, always an indicator, I feel, of states where they're increasing unemployment uh, situation there. Uh, also, with the ticket unemployment up a fraction of a percent, maybe something to look, keep monitoring in these particular states. Uh, New York, uh, at the top of the list, the claims up 4,509, now sitting at 16,066. New Jersey up 2,235 now at 17,401. California up 2,145, claims now sitting at 47,213. Georgia up 1,640 claims, now sitting at 6,644. Iowa up 1,429, claims now standing at 3,236. Kentucky up 1,102 claims for the week, now sitting at 2,449. Michigan up 1,100 claims, now sitting at 7,064. And Illinois up 1,083, claims now at 8,906. An interesting leading indicator for the overall U.S. economy is freight rail traffic. It's a measure of the amount of raw materials and finished goods being shipped by rail. The best source for this data is the American Association of Railroads, or AAR. It publishes this data weekly. For the week ending June the 29th, total U.S. weekly rail traffic was 491,899 carloads and intermodians. That's up 3.9% compared with the same week last year. Combined U.S. carloads and intermodal originations in June were 1,960,510, and that is up 3.8% or 70,877 carloads and intermodal units for June. That's, nice. That's a pretty nice percent increase, and we'll keep an eye out if those increases continue over the next couple months. Big surprises in the freight traffic category for the week ending June the 29th. Petroleum and petroleum products and intermodal units had the strongest gains with increases of 11.1% and 8.7% respectively. Chemicals, motor vehicles, and grains also had steady if not spectacular gains. Coal once again showed the biggest decline and it's down 17.7% compared to this time last year. If you track the oil market, you're probably familiar with the Baker Hughes rig count. This tracks the oil and gas rigs that are operating. The data is available by state by basin and nationally at www.rootcount.bakerhughes.com. This slide gives you an idea of the largest oil and gas deposits. It gives you a good sense of just how many of the large oil plays are in Texas and Oklahoma and how big an area the Marcellus gas region covers in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and parts of West Virginia. It also gives you a sense of that the Permian Basin, which is the nation's largest, is mostly in uh, Texas, but a fair amount of it spreads into New Mexico as well. 
Well, an increase of four rigs in the weekly data doesn't sound like a huge deal. In recent months, the Baker Hughes rig count seems to be leaking a rig or two each week, so it actually brings us up a little bit. It does look like the Eagle Ford Basin in Texas gained two rigs, and the total rig count for the United States is down 95 oil and gas rigs compared to this time last year. That is a 14% decline. Permian Basin, again, the nation's largest with 305 rigs, didn't show any change in number of rigs. It is down almost 11%. Eagle Ford, we mentioned, got, had an increase of two. That's, that's 49 rigs to Haynesville Basin uh, in Texas and the surrounding states. At 30, uh, 36 rigs, no, no change. That's still showing a 21% decline. Up in North Dakota, the Williston Basin, actually showing a, a slight increase at 2.9%, two, uh, 2 sitting at 35 rigs. The Marcellus region, well, previously mentioned, 25 operating rigs, down 10 rigs since last year. Let's look at oil prices and specifically West Texas Intermediate. Uh, going through the morning of July the 8th, prices set are sitting at $82.32 a barrel. Uh, that's significant in, in because the price of oil, which when it's over $80 a barrel, is considered pretty darn good in, in most in most uh, economies. And it's been above the $80 mark since June 17th. The average price since beginning of January for a price of WTI oil, TI oil is almost $79 per barrel. Looks like it's headed toward eighty dollars a barrel for an average price, which is one of the better prices we've seen on an average basis uh, looking over the last couple of years. Economists like to call copper pricing Dr. Copper because he's the leading economic indicator for future business activity since copper is used in so many industries. The construction industry is among the leading markets for copper because of its use in wire cable and copper plumbing pipe. The current trends in copper pricing continue to amaze and very often confuse metals economists. The current price of copper as of July 8th is $4.65 per pound. The COMEX has spent quite a bit of time over the $4.50 mark since the beginning of May, and just most recently on July 3rd, broke well above the $4.50 mark. And when you look at the chart, it's, it makes you think that maybe it's heading back up to over $5 a pound. But the, the copper market, uh, kind of like the weather, if you don't like the, or confused by what you see now, wait a day, it might be changing. It was an interesting quarter for electrical stocks with a nice sized handful of companies outpacing the S&P's growth for the quarter of 15%. We did see some former high flying electrical stocks that were well under that mark and actually losing a few dollars per share. Let's take a look at, a look at how electrical stocks fared in the second quarter of 2024. Owners of contractor stocks had the most to cheer about. All the major publicly traded contractors outpaced the S&P gain of 15%. Empor led the parade with its share prices up almost 72% since the beginning of the year. For the quarter, it was up almost 3%. Quanta, which had been leading the pack for the last few quarters, saw its stock prices slip in the second quarter with a 2% decline. However, those shares are still at more than 20% for the year. IES Holdings had a great quarter. Its share price gain of almost 14% for the quarter, and it's off almost 78% for the year. Other others contractor stocks that you can kind of benchmark some of the electrical companies against. Comfort Systems, symbol FIX, up 48.8% for the year, had a decline at 4.81%. MDU Resources Group, down slightly for the year, uh, decline, or excuse me, for the quarter, down 1.3% for the quarter. However, it's up about 27% for the year. And Mastec, ticker symbol MTZ, up over 42% for the year. Quarter price also, quite a gain. 14%. Uh, the, yeah, just as a comparison, when we're talking about those quarterly gains, the S&P quarter gain was 4.13%. And again, year-to-date, S&P up 15%. There's a lot of activity in the electrical manufacturer selection of publicly held companies. Uh, one of the most interesting things that happened uh, to my eyes is that GE Vernova, new company set up from GE, where it split off its uh, transportation aerospace division and also its power division to what is now called GE Vernova up 20.676% for the quarter. Encore Wire, acquired by Prisman Group. That was a big, big deal. Its, its stock had been up 34.24%. It announced its acquisition on April the 15th. Other stocks looking real good against the S&P for the, for the quarter, year-to-date, year-to-date, uh, Envent up 31.36%. Nexon's up 31.33%. Eaton also over 30%. ABB up over 27%, 27.75, actually, and Schneider up 25.39%.
Security branch owns a nice growth for, for the year, up 18.85%, but it was down a pretty healthy 8.94% for the quarter. Uh, not all electrical stocks doing quite as well as those just mentioned. Uh, some of the stocks that lost some share oh, year to date, uh, Signify is down at almost 23% for the year share prices. Atcor, which has been doing really well, and a, for sure a former high flyer on many of our electrical stock analysis charts over the past year or so, uh, down 17% for the year so far, and 30% for the quarter. Um, it leads me to believe I'm wondering what's going on with steel prices, because a lot of times, what's, Atcor is obviously a very well-run company, well-respected re company in the electrical industry, but when the stock prices fluctuate that much, something might be going on with steel prices. Uh, Mearson, uh, the French-based company, down 12, 12.4.9%. Also had been doing very well in recent quarters, as was Rockwell, which is down about 10%, and Nucor for year to date down about 7.3, excuse me, about 9.47%. It was a quiet quarter for distributor stocks, with no, no one of the companies that we track beating the S&P. Ranger had the biggest year-to-date gain at almost 10%, but it was also down 10.64% for the quarter. Wesco is off too with a decline of 9.72% for the quarter, and it's down almost 9% for the year. Uh, Fastenal, another company like Wesco, which in uh, some recent quarters and years had done quite well, actually showed some slippage, and it's for the year is down 1.5%. Rexel also showed a decline at 3.6%, as did some of the other companies from bordering the electrical market that we like to track. Uh, Arrow Electronics was down fraction 0.31%. General Parks Company down 5.8%. Distributor Solutions Group down 3.94%. We spent a lot of talk uh, recently about where the construction market is really at right now, and particularly as we look kind of at the halfway post for uh, the full year in 2024. Uh, the latest value of new construction data, which is uh, current through May, came out from the Department of Census, and I thought we'd spend a minute or two taking a look at that to show you where maybe where some of the hot spots are, and what you know really also where some some specific categories within the data also will show you just how big they are borrowed control of the market there. Um, I, I pull out if you look at the uh, two tables there uh, on. Uh, when you look at single family uh, manufacturing, obviously single for all many well-known reasons, single family not doing all that well, but it, its numbers do account for 20% of the total construction market for new new construction. Uh, the other one that I, I like to pull out, uh, been for the, we'll get into a little detail in a moment, is the manufacturing, about 11%, that's private manufacturing, but 11% of the total market. And it's actually been doing quite well, much better than uh, residential over the past year or so. Uh, if you look at you know, speaking about manufacturing, you know we've certainly talked a lot on the uh, project basis with all the new semiconductor plants going in, data centers going in, and some ex major expansions of some automobile plants, and particularly in the EV area. But let's take a look at them, break into some of the specific categories that census tracks within manufacturing. Uh, for the year, manufacturing up about 20 percent, and obviously quite, quite healthy right there over the month, and this is again from May, up about 1.3 percent. But we want you to dig in, take a look at the year-to-year -year change in the computer, electric, electronic, and electrical, which covers a lot of that uh, semiconductor and, uh, and, and industrial electronics that we like we talk about so much, up 31 percent. Another category within manufacturing up very strong, 36.5 percent increase for transportation equipment. Obviously, that, that's including a, a lot of electric vehicles and some of the plant expansion that we see. So as you can see, some of the numbers are reflected in the uh, in the data that's collected by Census Department. Uh, kind of flipping back over, you know, taking a look at that chart on the uh, on the right, you can you also get a sense of some of the other big segments of the total construction market. And again, this is specifically new construction. We mentioned single family, 20%, manufacturing, 11% of all construction. Highway and street on a public basis, that's about 7% up, excuse me, 7% of the total market. And multifamily housing, 6%, uh, going down a little further, uh, electric is about 5% of the total market. Public educational, big market for everyone in the electrical market, about 5% of the total market. And private office construction, 4% uh, of the total market. So I find that to be uh, interesting and we spend so much time looking at data, but when you really zero into some of the most the biggest chunks of the uh, data, what's most important, you realize how many of these segments that the electrical industry is really a major, major player in for sure. 
And that wraps up our podcast today. And a special thanks to the folks from Champion Fireglass for sponsoring our Today's Electrical Economy podcast series in 2024. As I mentioned, uh, next our next one will be 100 podcasts that they've been sponsoring. And that, going back about four years, I certainly do appreciate the, all the support we've gotten from the Champion team. As always, please contact me if there's any other type of electrical data that you'd like us to be covering or analyzing in this series of uh, podcasts. You can contact me at jlucy at endeavorb2b.com or 913-461-7679. Also, I'd like to mention if there's some of the data that you need, looking for additional data that we may have available, but electrical marketing newsletter that's available for only $99 per year. And we can get into some sales forecasts, some pricing data. Obviously, merged and acquisitions and quite a bit of other, other type of really valuable information right there. So again, thanks for listening with us today. Look forward to talking in two weeks. Our next presentation will be on July 22nd, 2024. Until then, stay healthy, be happy. We'll be a chance to do something fun as the summer's moving along here. And I'll talk with you in two weeks. Take care. Bye.